Hello everyone, welcome you all in this video lecture. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about citric acid cycle. So let's start with some introductory part about the cycle. So it is also called as Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle. The cycle was first discovered by H. A. Krebs who was a British biochemist and received Nobel Prize in 1953 for his discovery. On his name, it is also called as Krebs cycle. So basically the citric acid cycle is the part of cellular respiration or glucose metabolism. Now cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria of the cell and this cycle is considered as the most important cyclic metabolic pathway because it plays an important role in the metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. Now, where the citric acid cycle completes? So, in the case of eukaryotic organisms, the cycle completes in the mitochondrial matrix. But in case of prokaryotes, there is not any double membrane bound organelle present. So, there is no any mitochondria present in prokaryotic cells. So, in that condition, the citric acid cycle completes in the cytosol of the cell. Now, let's understand the cellular respiration or the process of cellular respiration in as an overview. So basically it is a catabolic process which means it generates energy and the process is very important for generation of ATP. Now the process of cellular respiration completes in four stages which are glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle and finally oxidative phosphorylation. Among all of these, the glycolysis occurs in cytosol of the cell and rest all three completes in the mitochondria. The process starts from glycolysis in which the glucose molecule breaks down into two molecules of pyruvate and then this pyruvic acid undergoes oxidation and converts into acetyl coenzyme A. And this acetyl coenzyme A take part in the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. So in this video, we will discuss about the Krebs cycle in detail. So let's start with some basic facts about citric acid cycle. So it is a common pathway for complete oxidation of carbohydrates, lipids and proteins all. Krebs cycle is a process from which glucose can be fully oxidized. And it is the cyclic reaction which finally results in the conversion of two carbon dioxide molecules by each acetyl coenzyme molecule. And we, as we have discussed earlier, it is a catabolic process because it generates energy in the form of NADH and FADH2. Basically, it uh, considered as an amphibolic reaction because in the uh, some steps or some phases of the cycle, it takes energy and after some, some phases or in some steps, it generates energy. The cyclic reaction of citric acid cycle results in the conversion of two molecules of carbon dioxide by each molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. Now, the Krebs cycle is a multi-step reaction which completes in eight steps, including condensation, dehydration, oxidative decarboxylation, oxidative phosphorylation, phosphorylation, dehydrogenation, hydration, and dehydrogenation. We will discuss all the 8 steps of Krebs cycle in detail. Now, this is the overall diagrammatic representation of citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. So, with the help of this graphical presentation, we will discuss about all the steps, all the intermediate and all the enzyme which catalyze this reaction or this cyclic process. So, let's start. At the first, the acetyl coenzyme A take part as a substrate in this reaction and with the help of enzyme citrate synthase, it converts into citrate. And in the second step, the aconitase enzyme catalyzes the reaction and the isomerization of citrate takes place which converts it into isocitrate. So in the next step, this isocitrate is converted into alpha ketoglutarate with the help of enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase and one molecule of NADH released in this process. Now, this alpha ketoglutarate converts into succinyl coenzyme A and also release a molecule of NADH or energy in this step. 
and this step is catalyzed by alpha keto gluto dehydrogenase the next step of citric acid cycle converts the succinyl coenzyme a into succinate which releases gtp or guanine triphosphate molecule and catalyzes and takes place by succinate thiokinase and after the succinate converts into fumarate with the help of succinate dehydrogenase and this fumarate is later converted into malate with the help of enzyme fumarase in the last step or the last fourth oxidation step of the cycle the malate converted into oxaloacetate which is four carbon molecule this process is catalyzed by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase and one molecule of nadh released in this step so after the production of oxaloacetate this oxaloacetic acetate further take part in the citric acid cycle and another molecule of acetyl coenzyme a come as a substrate in this reaction and also this reaction take part in the third and the fourth step of this cycle two molecules of carbon dioxide released now these are the steps of citric acid cycle so let's understand the steps in detail or let's revise all these steps so in the first step the condensation of oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme occur we have seen this acetyl coenzyme takes part as a substrate which comes from the pyruvate oxidation and oxaloacetate remains in the cyclic form and it produces citrate and coenzyme a with the help of enzyme citrate synthase so in the second step the isomerization of citrate takes place and here the dehydrogenation and later hydration completes in the presence of enzyme okinetase in the third step the isocitrate is oxidized and decarboxylated to form alpha keto glutarate this step is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase now in the second step the second oxidative decarboxylation occurs which results in the formation of succinyl coenzyme a and form alpha keto glutarate in the presence of alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase enzyme in the fifth step the substrate level phosphorylation occur which results in the formation of succinate and also releases energy in the sixth step which is the third oxidation step of the cycle the fumarase is produced and the reaction catalyzed by succinate dehydrogenase here an enzyme malonate acts as an inhibition for this step now in the second uh, or the seventh step the hybridization of fumarate occurs and produces malate in the presence of enzyme fumarase after that in the last of four oxidation steps of the cycle the carbon hydroxyl group is converted into carbonyl group which regenerates the oxaloacetate which is needed for again next step which is step 1 and thus the oxaloacetate further takes part in this reaction and the malate dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidation of malate into the oxaloacetate now we can see the overall reaction of citric acid cycle so this is the reaction where the acetyl coenzyme a takes part as a substrate and three nad molecule a molecule of adp and three hydrogen oxide or water molecules take part in this reaction and as we have discussed that it is a catabolic reaction or energy generative reaction the acetyl coenzyme break down into two molecules of carbon dioxide and three nadh nad molecules converted into nadh molecules and the adp molecule converts into atp molecule so now let's understand the regulation of citric acid cycle or how it is being regulated so the cycle is regulated at its three strongly exergonic steps exergonic meaning which are releasing energy and these steps are first step third step and fourth step respectively these all three steps of this acid citric acid cycle are irreversible steps and the steps are catalyzed by citrate synthase isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha keto dehydrogenase 
so here the regulatory enzymes are controlled by some mechanisms which are substrate availability the product inhibition or allosteric feedback inhibition so here we can see the first step can be limited by the availability of citrate synthase substrates which is coenzyme a or the enzyme which is citrate synthase or the another substrate which is oxaloacetate and the next step which is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase is allosterically activated by adp molecule which can be in inhibit the reaction product and the another step which act as a regulatory step is allosterically inhibited by succinyl coenzyme a and nath molecules so here this is the graphical presentation or diagram for the regulation of citric acid cycle here we can see the first step which is catalyzed by citrate synthase and act as a regulatory step for this cycle so here the nadh molecule act as a inhibitor and also the substrate which is acetyl coenzyme a and oxaloacetate can also regulate this cycle by the process of substrate availability or substrate inavailability in the third reaction the process is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase and this step is catalyzed by adp molecule and it is inhibited by nadh molecule and is the fourth step where the succinyl coenzyme produced the nadh molecule or the succinyl coenzyme a which is also the product of this step act as the inhibitor for this regulatory step and the enzyme alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase activate this step so in this video lecture we have discussed about citric acid cycle its steps in detail and its regulation cycle i hope all you have now discussed or learn better about citric acid cycle thank you